गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ बी ए पार्ट टू गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज चाकसू आई वेलकम यू ऑल वंस अगेन टू द क्लास फॉर पोइट्री आई हैव बीन डूइंग द इंडियन पोइट्स विद यू एंड वी हैव डन सम वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पोएम्स टुडे आई शैल बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग यू टू अनदर न्यू पोइट दैट इज अरुण कोलाटकर uh maybe you have not heard his name before but uh, he was born on the 1st of november uh, 1932 and uh, on 25th september 2004 he left this world and uh, his full name was arun balkrishna kolatkar and uh, he was as you can make out from the name he was an indian poet and uh, he belonged to maharashtra and uh, therefore naturally it was uh, uh, in two languages majorly that he wrote that is marathi and english and uh, he penned uh, his poetry is basically focusing on everyday matters and uh, he specially found humor in the smallest of everyday incidents that happen in life and interestingly i think kolatkar is the only indian poet other than kabir to be featured on the world classics titles of the new york review of books uh, now this uh, new york review of books it publishes very uh, long form reviews and essays and uh, they include uh, usually very well known writers or original poetry and also some letters and uh, interestingly esquire which is a popular american men's magazine called this particular review of books as the premier literary intellectual magazine in the english language so uh, it was the first uh, you can say his uh, name is the uh, second one sorry not the first the second one after kabir to be included in this new york review of books and uh, we can see that he is one of the modern indo um, anglian poets who is bilingual and uh, till 1990 uh, his small poems uh, you know remained unpublished uh, but uh, in the form of one major collection after uh, which was published initially i mean the first that was published was jajuri it was published in 1976 and uh, uh, this uh, uh, collection uh, won him the commonwealth poetry prize in 1977 uh, and his uh, marathi verse collection uh, uh, which is called the bijki wahi i hope my pronunciation is correct won a sahitya academy award in 2005 so uh, kolatkar was a rather hesitant you know person as far as his Uh, english poems are concerned he was a little apprehensive about bringing that out as a collection and uh, uh, his book jejuri that is had a wide impact uh, amongst fellow poets like nisi mezical now nisi mezical is also one of the poets which has been prescribed for you we'll be doing that too and the other person who was influenced by his works was salman rushdie and for some years some of his poems are also included in school texts now you can see that his poem uh, the two or three poems that have been prescribed they are at the college level at the second year college level that we are uh, going to cover so uh, but even at the school level some of his poems were included and uh, this particular anthology it evokes a series of images to highlight the ambiguities of modern day life because he is the man of his times and uh, he has written about the day to day life as he perceived it and uh, whatever he observed that is what he has penned but that is what he has mentioned in his book uh, in his uh, collection of uh, poems and uh, uh, situated in a religious setting the subject matter is not religious i mean it this whole setting like for example one of the poems is titled chaitanya so uh, i mean uh, there is a religious kind of uh, setting you can say as far as you know the locale is concerned but the subject matter is not religious at all and uh, uh, 
uh, his like for example he uh, went to a this particular collection like jujuri it is a pilgrim center in the southeast of pune now and uh, the deity who is worshipped there is uh, khandoba and chaitanya visited this place early in the 16th century and uh, the poet describes his vis visits to jujuri and uh, the travel is done by the bus i mean and uh, the return journey is done by train so this is like the kind of experience whatever he experienced on his travel that is what he has described described in this poem chaitanya and during the interval kolatkar goes round he looks at the gods he looks at the priest everything that you know he uh, observes he sees there that is very faithfully recorded in his, in this collection of poems and uh, in total i think there are about 38 lyrics in uh, this uh, compilation uh, but the poet is rather you can say he is neutral and when he looks at the temples when he looks at the ruins he looks at how ill lighted uh, the place is the water supply is not very uh, you know good it is defective then there are beggars all around now that is something very common in india you will find beggars outside the temple premises almost they in um, all the cities uh, and uh, it's a common sight and uh, uh, there is uh, a kind of you know a feeling of discontent that you can perceive through uh, when you read these poems and like for example usually uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, india is known for its bhakti movement it is known for uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, ecstasy or kind of uh, freedom or the kind of pleasure that you derive when you are in the you know in you are in a in a almost you can say trance like mode or when you are in that uh, uh, into that uh, you're talking about religion or you're talking about bhakti or you're talking about worship but for kolatkar it is the opposite he is not uh, does not experience any of these uh, effervescent emotions and it's uh, you know it's a kind of uh, a very everyday outlook that he has when he is visiting this religious place he is observing at the form rather and all those things which are missing and it's a kind of Uh, a, a, a kind of uh, uneasy feeling that he has and uh, the way he talks about it it's almost as if there is cold blooded realism and he debunks the places of pilgrimage and uh, it seems as if all these places have a price tag of their own so the impression that is left by the temple on the poem uh, on the poet sorry has been described in great length uh, along with the scene of the railway station and he describes both the places that is the temple uh, and the railway station with very realistic similes and he finds that both these places is suffer from old traditions and superstitions and also there is a feeling of isolation there is silence and uh, uh, towards the end of the poem there is one lyric which presents a great contrast between uh the temple place and the railway station like he's drawing comparisons and contrasts of his experience in the temple vis-a-vis the railway station and uh, you can say that there is whatever he's writing that's you know written with a pinch of salt it's a kind of a satire and there is a lack of reverence you know that uh, over the top feeling that you have or sometimes you know Uh, the way the religious places are described that reverence that awe is missing from his poems and uh, there are very few moments of pathos and uh, it is when, when there's one incident where he meets a begging woman and uh, there's uh, the begging be the beggar woman encounters a newly married bride so there's a kind of contrast between these figures also and the poem which opens with a journey it also ends with a return journey and uh, throughout this you feel as if the poet is looking for something there is there something that the poet is searching for and he is not been able to find it even in this grand place in this you know uh, in this temple or in this place where people go in with lot of hope uh, you know maybe to 
have their desires fulfilled or to maybe you know look for nirvan so that is all missing as far as kolatkar himself is concerned he finds it like something very uh, ordinary something like you know a day to day uh, life that you have in an ordinary city that is what he uh, you know finds even in the temples it's nothing special it is nothing uh, grand it is nothing uh, that brings uh, you know him to a feeling of ecstasy so this is something which is a typical feature of uh, uh his poems that have been or you can say the um, uh, lyrics that have been included in this compilation uh then uh, uh this whole like it is situated in a religious setting and the uh, as i said the subject matter is not religious at all and it is interesting to note um uh, i am just sharing this uh, tip that he lived without a telephone all his life so you can see that he was rather a reclusive figure he was not somebody who was you know very social or somebody who uh, you know uh, liked to interact with people a lot and he was uh, as i said previously he was also hesitant about bringing out his work and it was only after uh, he was diagnosed with cancer that two volumes of his english poetry were published one is kala ghoda poems and the other is uh sarpa pastra uh, that was uh, in uh, published in 2004 and they were brought out by his friends now sarpa satra is an english version of a poem with a similar name in his marathi collection the beech ki wahi so as i had said that he wrote both in marathi and english so this beech ki wahi is another uh, uh, poem uh, compilation that has been uh, written in marathi and here this title uh, sarpa satra is one of the poems that is included here and that title has been taken up and uh, given to his uh, uh, anthology in english then his poems were usually narrative in form and there was a mixture of myth and allegory and also some contemporary history and although kolatkar was never known as a social commentator yet uh, you can say that his narrative poems tend to offer a whimsical uh, uh, you know kind of a co- commentary on social norms on social moon mores or social uh, you know the fabric and many poems in uh, bichki wahi refer to the contemporary history however these are in no way you can say that they are they are political comments but they are the poet's own personal experiences and uh, it is to be noted that he avoids any kind of uh, dalit leftist or feminist rhetoric he avoids all of it and he just takes a personal uh, you know interest in his surroundings and he uh, writes about that in his poetry and then while jejuri was all about the agonized relationship of a modern sensitive individual with the indigenous culture the kala ghoda poems on the other hand uh, tell us about the dark underside of mumbai's underbelly now bombay's uh, the underworld culture is very well known it is uh, you know so many you can say the bollywood films have been made on this theme so um, these poems kala ghoda poems these were kalagoda as you know is a very popular spot in bombay and these poems uh, uh, have you know basically talked about uh, bombay's underbelly and like jejuri kalagoda is also a place poem as i said he is you know he looks at places he looks at life he looks at people around and he uh, explores all of them in his work so here also this is a place poem but at the same time side by side myth history geography and ethos of the place is also uh, you know uh, taken in the stride and that's his typical style of writing and uh, jejuri is uh, uh, as i told you a very popular place for pilgrimage and uh, uh, so that is what uh, it talks about but uh, it could never become kolatkar's home like for him bombay was his home maybe he would go to pune and visit this place but it could never become a home to him it was bombay 
that was his home and kala goda uh, uh, you know focuses upon uh, uh, looking at these uh, mind boggling complexities of this great grand metropolis that is bombay and uh, while jajuri can be considered as an example of searching for a belonging which happens to be a major fixation of the previous generation of indian poets in english kala goda poems do not uh, betray any such anxieties or agonies of belonging so you know there is a contrast the indian english uh, poets or you can say the poetry is marked by this continuous you know uh looking for uh, uh you know an identity or searching for uh, you know kind of belonging but uh, in this particular uh, set of poetry that is kala ghora poems uh, this is missing this feeling is not there i mean uh, there is kind of you know there it's almost you can say that there is a transition you can see the change in the kind of poems that have been included here the kala ghora poet poems are more of you can say uh, they are more grown up they are as if he has found his mark as if kolatkar is comfortable in the way things are he is accepted it so the, there is not a continuous um, look out for an identity or there is not a continuous uh, uh, look out of uh, you know look out for uh, you know uh, feeling of belonging that is kind of you can say the poet has overgrown that feeling and uh, the identity crisis you can say is done away with and the poet has uh, kind of matured there is you know kind of flowering into maturity i like to put it that way and uh, there is remarkable maturity and of the poetic vision that is embodied in these uh, poems and therefore uh, this particular uh, book it becomes kind of milestone in the indian poetry in english and uh, after his death a new edition of uh, uh, you know the poem uh, jajuri it was uh, as i had said published in the new york review book classic series uh, it was like reintroduced it was republished under this series and the introduction was given by amit choudhury and this came up in 2006 uh, 2006 that is almost 2 uh, years after his death and um, interestingly when he came to know that he was suffering from cancer he requested arvind krishna mehrotra another uh, indian figure in the world of literature Uh, so he requested him to edit some of his uncollected poems like there were some poems as i had said that he had not published all his uh, poems during his lifetime and there were many that were lying unpublished so he requested him to publish them to collect them put them in one under one heading and publish them and these poems were finally published as the boat ride and other poems uh, by paris prakashan in 2008 so you can see that after his death uh two compilations more compilations came up one in 2006 uh with an introduction by amit choudhury and the other one which was published in 2008 and uh, that was done by arvind krishna mehrotra then his collected poems in english uh, uh these were published by the blood axe books in britain so uh, this was another uh, publication that uh, came up the collected poems in english this was again edited by arvind krishna mehrotra and this particular set of poems they were published in 2010 so you can see that in one way there's only one book major book that was published in his lifetime that is jajuri and the second one is the kala ghoda poems but the other three major books uh which uh he published uh were done or you can say not published he did not publish it it was his uh friends and colleagues uh, one is amit choudhury and the other is arvind krishna mehrotra who brought out these books uh much later um that is after his death in 2006 to 6 2008 and 2010 so now we have a range of books available 
and uh, at present we are going to concentrate only three of his poems that have been prescribed for your course and these poems interestingly are not very long and uh, once again the backdrop is indian uh, the context is totally indian and uh, the language used is also you can say indian english so it is not very difficult to understand quite an interesting set of poems are part of your syllabus one is the bus uh, the other is uh, chaitanya and uh, uh, the third is an old woman so these are the three poems that we are going to do this is uh, the introduction that i have given today i hope you uh, will be able to also go through the pdf notes that becomes part of your uh, uh, introduction to any of the questions that you need to attempt i hope things are clear so be a part two students we'll soon be coming to an end to this portion as well so please go through the notes and uh, in the next uh, lecture i shall be beginning with one of these points till then please take care stay safe bye bye